Welcome to DevOps interview series. Are you ready to tackle the real-time deployment failures and ace your next DevOps interview? In this video, we are covering the top scenario-based DevOps interview questions with real-world failures and how to fix them. I am assuming you are already familiar with DevOps, so I will be focusing only on 20 Q&A related to deployment failures. Stay tuned and let's get started. Question 1. During a deployment, the application fails to start and the logs show errors related to container image pulling. How would you troubleshoot this and resolve this deployment failure? Here's the answer. Firstly, I would check the connectivity to the container registry to ensure it's accessible. Then, I would verify the image name and version specified in the deployment configuration. If everything seems correct, I would examine the registry credentials and ensure they are properly configured in the deployment environment. Question 2. After deployment, users report experiencing intermittent 500 errors when accessing the application. What steps would you take to identify the root cause of these errors and rectify the deployment failure. Here's the answer. I would start by examining the application logs to pinpoint the source of errors. If the errors are related to application code, I would roll back the deployment to the previous stable version and conduct a thorough code review to identify and fix the issue. Additionally, I would monitor server resource utilization to rule out any performance related issues. Question 3. The deployment completes successfully, but the application behaves differently in the production environment compared to the testing environment. How would you investigate and address this deployment failure? Here's the answer. Firstly, I would compare the configuration settings and environmental variables between the testing and production environments to identify any discrepancies. Then I would review the deployment process to ensure that all necessary configurations and dependencies are properly set up. If needed, I would perform targeted testing in the production environment to replicate and troubleshoot the issue further. Question number four. After deployment, the application experiences a significant increase in response time. How would you troubleshoot and mitigate this deployment failure? Here's the answer. I would start by analyzing application metrics and performance logs to identify any bottlenecks or spikes in the resource utilization. If the issue is related to infrastructure, I would scale up the necessary resources such as CPU or memory. In the Kubernetes cluster. Additionally, I would review recent code changes and conduct performance testing to identify any optimizations or regressions. Question number five. A deployment fails due to resource constraints in the Kubernetes cluster. What steps would you take to resolve this deployment failure and prevent future occurrences? Here's the answer. I would start by analyzing the resource utilization patterns in the Kubernetes cluster to identify any overutilized nodes or pods. Then I would scale up the cluster by adding more nodes or upgrading existing ones to meet the resource demands of the application. To prevent future occurrences, I would set up auto scaling policies and resource quotas to dynamically adjust resources based on workload demands. Question number six. The deployment process hangs at a particular stage without any error messages. How would you troubleshoot this deployment failure and resume the deployment process? Here's the answer. I would check the logs of the deployment process to identify any errors or warnings that might provide clues about the cause of hang. If no useful information is found, 
I would examine the status of the underlying infrastructure components such as networking, storage, compute resources. If needed, I would manually intervene to restart or roll back the deployment process and investigate the root cause further. Question number seven. After a deployment, some users report missing or corrupted data in the application. How would you investigate and rectify this deployment failure? Here's the answer. I would start by checking the application and database logs for errors related to data retrieval or corruption. Next, I would verify if data migrations were ex executed correctly during the deployment, if any recent configuration changes impacted data handling. I would also compare the old and the new configurations. If the issues still persist, I would consider rolling back to the last stable version and carefully reapplying migrations. Finally, I would perform data integrity checks and restore from backups if necessary. Question number eight. The deployment succeeds, but the application experiences frequent crashes or restarts. What steps would you take to diagnose and resolve this deployment failure? Here's the answer. I would analyze the application logs and crash reports to identify the underlying cause of the crashes or restarts. If the issue is related to memory leaks or resource exhaustions. I would profile the application's memory usage and optimize resource utilization. Additionally, I would review recent code changes and dependencies to identify any bugs or compatibility issues that might be triggering these crashes. Question number nine. After the deployment, the application's UI appears broken or distorted. How would you troubleshoot and fix this deployment failure? Here's the answer. I would inspect the browser console for any JavaScript errors or warnings that might be causing the UI issues. If the problem is related to CSS styling or layout, I would review the recent code changes and inspect the applications CSS files for any conflicts or errors. Additionally, I would ensure that all static assets such as images, fonts, and icons are correctly referenced and loaded by the application. Question number 10. Deployment process fails due to conflicts or inconsistencies in the health chart. How would you address the deployment failure and ensure Helm chart consistency? Here's the answer. I would review the Helm chart templates and values files to identify any conflicting or misconfigured settings. If necessary, I would update the Helm chart to resolve the conflicts and ensure consistency across the environments. Additionally, I would establish version control and release management practices to track changes to Helm charts and prevent future inconsistencies. That was just the first 10 Q&A. In part two, we will cover even more real world DevOps deployment failures. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss it.